Welcome to section 8.5, Polynomial and Rational Inequalities. Alright, so the quadratic inequality, which is on page 570 of your textbook. A quadratic equality, or inequality, can be written in the form of ax squared plus bx plus c, which is the normal form of a quadratic we've seen before. This time we have the inequality less than zero, or ax squared plus bx plus c greater than zero, or we have the other two options. Let me go ahead and fill them in. Oops, and one more, try my copy paste here. Or we have the equal to options. So there are four technical options. And all of these are where a does not equal zero, which basically just means we need to have the x squared component for it to be quadratic, which we know. So let's take a look at example one. Solve and graph the solution set of x, or sorry, of two x squared plus three x minus two greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so one of the main things you really wanna look for are the inequality signs. When you see that, know that we're gonna end up having to do some test points. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna get our critical values to find our solution. Okay, so let's go ahead and factor this, and that'll give us our critical values. So let's see, factoring 3x squared plus 3x minus 2. We need factors of 2, so that's 1 and 2, and then other factors of 2, so the first 2 and the second 2, minus subtract to get positive 3. So we know we need a, a negative and a positive. So taking the factors of both of those, 2 times 2 is 4, and 1 times 1 is 1. We can do negative 1 plus 4, and that'll give me the positive 3 that we want in the middle. Okay, so the 2's timed each other, so 2x, and then times the 2, and then we have the 1 and the 1x. Okay, it is factored. And this is where we're going to pull out the items that we call critical values. Okay, because this is inequality, we're going to have to answer on intervals instead of just a specific point like we would with equations. Okay, so my critical value are going to come from my factors. So this guy and this guy. So 2x minus 1 will help me give one of my critical values. So we'll set that equal to 0. And then x plus 2 will be my other critical value. And solving for x on both of these, we get x equals 1 half and x equals negative 2. What do we do with our critical values? We're going to set them on a number line and do some test points. And this is something that I'm going to look for. You don't have to follow the exact format I do, but if you don't have your own format, the format I have I think is pretty simple and straightforward for testing. So let's go ahead and set them up on the number line. So we have the negative 2 and the half. And then we're going to set up our testing box. So our test points split up our graph into one, two, three parts. So we have one, two, three. And we need to test each of these intervals. And what am I trying to find? Well, answers that make my equation or my inequality true. So this is going to be the spot for my test points that I'm going to pick. And then we're going to input our, ter um, our terms, our factors. So 2x minus 1 is one factor, and then x plus 2 is the other. And each of these get their own row. And then what we're going to do is we're going to check out what the sign is going to look like. And then the very last thing we're going to do, once again I'll explain this a little further as we go along, the last thing we're looking for is, and it's based on our equation, our inequality, we want to know if it's greater than or equal to 0. That's where the last one comes from. We want to figure out if our sign is greater than or equal to zero. Once again, that comes from our actual inequality above. So let's pick a test point. I need to pick something that's less than negative two. I like to go with tens and fives if I can. So let's go with negative 10. And then something in between negative two and a half, well, an easy number is always zero if you can pick zero. And then anything bigger than a half, well, that would be 10. So once again, you pick your test points from the intervals in between 
your critical value items. Okay, now let's test them. So all we're looking at is the sine. If I was to plug negative 10 into my binomial, 2x minus 1, what would I get? Well, 2x times a negative 10, that's going to be negative, and minus negative 1 still be negative. Plugging negative 10 into this, that'll be negative 10 plus 2, still negative. Now, remember, our binomials are being multiplied together up above here. They're being multiplied. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply these two together in my head, and what sign do I get? Negative times a negative is a positive. The next thing we ask ourselves is, is a positive greater than or equal to 0? And the answer is, yes. So since this is a yes, that means this section of the interval is part of my solution. So we're going to shade that in. The next thing to check is, if you remember, we have less than or equal to as part of my inequality symbol, which means we include negative 2 and a half as part of my solution. Okay, so we've tested one of the intervals. We have two more to test. This interval and this interval. So go ahead, pause the video, see if you can test these by yourself and check in with me. Okay, so plugging 0 in times 2x minus 1, we're going to end up with a negative. Plugging it in here, 0 plus 2 is a positive. Now negative times positive is a negative. Is that greater than or equal to 0? The answer is no. So we do not shade in the interval above. And lastly, we have 10. Plugging that in to 2x minus 1, that'll be a positive. Plug it in here, 10 plus 2 is 12, so that's positive. And then a positive times a positive, does that give me what? Well, that gives me a positive again. And is that greater than or equal to 0? The answer is yes. So that is part of our solution. Now my final answer I should answer in interval notation. So it's going to be negative infinity to negative 2. And we include 2 union a half to positive infinity. And that would be my answer in interval notation. So once again, you do not need to show this exact box setup, but I need to see that you use test points and you check the signs and that you graph it and write it in interval notation. So an easy way to get all of these checkpoints done is to just follow how I showed the work once again, you're not required to show it exactly the same way, but those are the items I need. Test points, checking the signs, your graphing, and your interval notation. And the critical values. need to show that as well. So let's solve and graph. That should be solve. And graph the solution set of 2x plus 1, 3x minus 3, and x plus 4, greater than or equal to 0. Or sorry, just greater than zero. All right, so whenever we see an inequality symbol going on and we have multiple items with our variable being multiplied together, I know this is going to require the testing and the graphing. So let's go ahead and find my critical values from each of these items. So that's going to be x equals negative half. And then we have 3x minus 3 equals to zero. So that means x is going to equal 1. And then my last critical value, x plus 4 equals to 0, because it goes negative 4. Once again, leave some space in between these if you're solving different equations. Okay, so those are my critical values. Let's go ahead and set up my box. Testing. Okay, so once again, what items do you pick in the box for testing? Well, you pick your test points, and then you set up all of your factors. So we have one, two, three factors to put in. And x plus 4. And then you have your sign. And lastly, what do we want? We want it to be just greater than 0. Once again, that last part depends on your specific equation. So let's go ahead and put in my critical values. There's a lot more this time, so we actually have to do much more testing. 
because we have three critical values. So we have negative four, negative half, and one. Doesn't need to be perfectly spaced out. So we split it into four different um, parts of our graph. Let me go ahead and bubble in for my answers. Are we including these guys in our answers? The answer is no, because there is no equal to symbol up there. So we don't have to bubble them in. So picking test points. Um, I'm going to go ahead with negative 10. Let's do negative 2, 0, and 10. Once again, I like to go in 5s, 0s, and 10s. And if I can't, I just pick what I can. All right, so plugging it in, 2x plus 1, that should still be a negative. 3x minus 3, it's still going to give me a negative when I plug in the negative 10. And lastly, negative 10 plus 4 is still going to be a negative. So when I multiply all these together, negative times negative is a positive. And times that positive to a negative, it'll be a negative. Is that greater than 0? The answer is no. So I do not include that in part of my inequality. Moving on, let's check the negative 2. When I plug negative 2 into there, that's negative 4 plus 1, still negative. And that's going to be negative 6 minus 3, still negative. And lastly, negative 2 minus, or sorry, plus 4. So that'll be positive. Once again, this is some mental math going on, so that's positive. And then positive times positive is a negative. Sorry, positive times positive is a positive, not a negative. Is that greater than or equal to zero? Sorry, is that just greater than zero? Tripping up on some words here. Is that greater than zero? The answer is yes. So that is part of my solution. I'll go ahead and fill it in. Now let's check zero. So plugging that in there, that'll be positive. Plugging it in here, that'll be negative. Plugging it in here, zero plus four is going to be positive because that's a 4. And lastly, let's multiply these out. Positive times negative, negative. Negative times positive is a negative. Is a negative greater than 0? The answer is no. So I do not fill that section out. One more to go. Checking 10. So when I plug 10 into there, that's going to be positive. When I plug 10 into there, that'll also be positive. And when I plug 10 into there, that will also be positive. So multiplying that out, positive times positive is positive. Positive times positive is, once again, positive. So is my final answer greater than zero? The answer is yes. So I'll go ahead and fill that in, and an error head in indicating infinity. Last thing to do is answer in interval notation. So this interval is part of it, so we don't include negative four, but it's our boundary. Then we do union, 1, 2, infinity. Once again, if you are having trouble with interval notation or any of that, please pop by an office hour, and we can go over that. So now it looks like we have, ooh, just one more problem in this video. Now this one's kind of fun, but it's also a little tricky. Why do I say that? Well, first off, it's a fraction. Now you might be tempted to say, hey, let's treat this like an equation and multiply everything by the lowest common denominator of x minus 1, and we can get rid of the fractions, and happy day. There's a one problem with that. If I multiplied both sides by x minus 1 with the goal to cancel out the denominators, I have a question for you. Is x minus 1 a positive or a negative number? Why does that matter? Well, if you remember, with inequality signs, if we multiply it by a negative number, we have to switch the direction the sign is facing. But I don't know if this is positive or negative because I don't even know what x is yet. So we can't do that because that brings up too many problems. So because we're working with an inequality, we have to keep working with the fraction. Sadly, I know, don't start crying. But yes, we have to work with the fraction. So, what's our new plan? Well, let's go ahead and subtract 5 from both sides. We're going to set this equal to 0. 
add the fractions, and then do pretty much the same thing we were doing in the problems above. So let's go ahead and do the building up property because we want to add the fractions. We get x plus 2 minus 5 times x minus 1 all over x minus 1 plus center equal to 0. And then we have x plus 2 minus 5x plus 5 all over x minus 1 less than or equal to 0. And adding like terms, x and negative 5x, and then 2 and 5, what do we get? That'll be negative 4x plus 7 all over x minus 1 less than or equal to 0. Alright, so we finally got here. What do we have? We have, let me go ahead and change my highlighter color. We have one single fraction equal to, or sorry, less than or equal to, zero. So this is where we want to go. Once again, we want to have one fraction less than or equal to, or whatever inequality symbol you have, set to zero. Then we pull off our critical values. Once again, link sure to label your work, CV for critical values. And those come from whatever factors you have. And right now we only have two, the top one and the bottom one. So in the top one we get x equals 7 over 4 when we solve, and x equals 1. And these critical values, once again, are what we use when we set up our box for our testing. So the nice thing is we don't have that many critical values, so we don't have to do that much testing, which is kind of a relief. Texting can be a little scary because you're working with just positive and negatives, and a lot can go wrong when you do that. Okay, so my test points, and we have, let's see, 1 and 7 over 4, which is technically 1 and 1 and 3 fourths. So that's just a little more than 1. Ooh, not quite that fun to work with. Okay, so let's see, test points and then my values, so I have negative 4x plus 7, x minus 1, I have a lot of space here. And then I'm going to check my sign, and lastly, what do I want? Well, I want to know if it's less than or equal to 0. And what are we talking about? We're talking about if our sign is less than or equal to 0. That's what we're trying to figure out. Alright, let's go ahead and set up our splits. Nice thing is, once again, we only had two critical values, so we only have three things to test. So my first test point, let's go ahead and I just pick negative 10, that's easy. But what is in between 1 and 1 and 3 fourths? That's hard. Well, 1.5 is in between those two. And then what's bigger than 1 and 3 fourths? I'll pick 10, that's easy to work with. Next thing, I need to check out my bubbles. Am I including them or not? Well, there is an equal to sign, so you might be in tempted to say, well, let's go ahead and include both of them. But remember, these two values are what make our binomials equal to zero. Can we let our denominator equal zero? No! Remember, the answer is no, we cannot let it equal to zero. So, this binomial, which is right here, we cannot let this one equal zero. Which means you cannot be filled in. Let's go ahead, we cannot let it be filled in, it's going to be an open circle. Alright, good, so we've gotten those filled out, let's go ahead and start the testing. So plugging in negative 10 to here, that's going to be negative 4 times negative 10, so that's positive. And plus 7, that's going to be a positive. And then negative 10 minus 1 is going to be a negative. I'm going to multiply those two together, positive times negative is a negative. So, is that less than or equal to zero? The answer is yes, it is. So go ahead and fill that in. Now the inside one, 1.5. Well, plugging that in, a fourth times 1.5, let's see, what would that be? 1.5 times 4, that's going to be 2 and t. And then 4 times 2 is going to be, sorry, 4 times 1 is 4, plus 2. 
six, so it's gonna be six, which is less than seven. You might say, why am I actually calculating that this time and I didn't do it before? The reason is it's so close together when I plug these in, I gotta be careful. So that is still going to be positive. And then 1.5 minus one, that is actually gonna be positive because 1.5 is bigger than the negative one. And then positive times positive is gonna be positive. Is that less than zero? The answer is no. So we don't fill in this one. Ooh, one more to go. 10. So when I plug 10 in here, that's gonna be negative 40 plus seven, which will be negative. Plug in 10 into here, that's gonna be 10 minus one, so that'll be positive. And then multiplying these two guys together, positive times negative is going to be negative. Is negative less than zero or equal to? The answer is yes. So we'll go ahead and fill in that interval piece there. And we finished all of our test points. So let's go ahead and answer in interval notation for my answer. And we're almost done, it's so exciting. Okay, let's see, just waiting on my pen here. All right, so we have negative infinity all the way up to one, not including it, union, including one and three fourths, which it's easier to just write as seven fourths, all the way up to positive infinity. And we're done. Alrighty, that is it for this section. Please be careful when you're working with inequalities. You have to do the test points, you gotta do the graphing, you gotta do the interval notation. If you have any questions on this, please stop by an office hour or send me an email.